episode nine, the death of Luke Cage is what it looks like. End of the show, game over. I feel like he's been killed at the end of every episode for the last, well now three episodes. As long as there's still more episodes to go, they can't trick us though. Yes, we, we know he's coming back. Well, I'm pretty sure. It could be a, like a four episode funeral. That'd be kind of an interesting way to end it. He's not in the, the Defenders after all. It's all just been a play. Psych. Yeah. So, we've been talking about the lower energy, the, the slower pacing, the muted tones of the music and stuff. I think I figured out what it is. Oh, yeah? I think it's that those first episodes had a lot more going on in the club with the live music playing and interceding with the action and everything. And that was really awesome. It had like a lot of energy and life behind it. And we haven't had that. We had a little bit of it this episode, mm. but it just still didn't have the same type of power I felt as it had before. And I think that's what it is, is maybe kind of set us up in this first few episodes with all that club music. Yeah. And then it hasn't been in the show. That's what I'm thinking maybe is how come we, like, we feel that way. Is it's like a little bit of contrast to what we felt at the beginning. Yeah, it, that could be definitely part of it. Um, what I actually, though, I like this episode. Like, it... That pace worked because I thought what was going on was a lot more interesting. Like, the whole uh, Misty Knight with the psychologist thing, you know, they spent a lot of time on her character. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting, too. I I think this is pretty much guaranteeing that Misty Knight's going to be in other netflix marvel productions i mean i it's almost unavoidable i would imagine now unless they kill her no yeah. don't kill her um that was really cool to me and then luke cage is kind of wandering the streets that was interesting um the i don't know it was just more everything was more interesting about it the the, the diamondback thing is really interesting to me because he's like a Compared to Cottonmouth, Mr. Stokes, he's, like, way more of just this terrifying force of nature, it seems like, mm -hmm. who just kills people all the time. Well, yeah, he's, like, he's a kingpin, like, super kingpin type guy that gets his hands dirty. He's the one who's killing people. He, I mean, he has, obviously, he has, like, shades and stuff, but he's out there making it happen. Yeah, and but he's also, like, way more brute force. In fact, they even kind of alluded to it in the show when they were talking about I think it was Black Mariah was talking about, you know, how Cottonmouth kind of was kept the violence to a minimum, mm -hmm. you know? And this guy, you know, I don't need you or you offend me or you're in my way, you're going to be yeah. dead, you know? Um, and it's really interesting because it's towards the end of it, I think you kind of start to see Mr. Cool Customer Shades kind of like oh man I am in with the wrong guy like I think he's like I am on the leash of a really dangerous dude mm -hmm. like I think he's he's been cool this whole time kind of acting like the manipulator and everything but in reality he's he's tethered to a guy who could just kill him instantly because he's thinks he's only useful or yeah. Not anymore yeah well, yeah and you get the, the fact that um he liked Cottonmouth and that's probably the reason why Cottonmouth managed to fail a couple times and not just get taken out immediately and everything because mm -hmm. they had that connection with each other so you see that like there really was like a bug more like shades really was some there to try to help like 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 the whole time he's like oh you know are they trying to to take all the organizations like no he liked him he was trying to help him out yeah. he wanted him to succeed but now the, like his one it's almost like the kind of like the one guy that um dying back Light is dead, uh -huh. so now he has he doesn't owe anybody in in yeah. at all anything, which is interesting. I'm wondering if we're gonna get more showing their relationship and like how they kind of grew and how that relates to Luke Cage too, because he was connected. It's like it's like Dimebag's connected to both of them. Yeah, like so. Yeah, and there was that whole thing where Luke Cage was talking about him being delusional and thinking he was his brother, but he's like kind of mumbling about how he's not or something about mm -hmm. his father so you know who knows what that means does his dad have like a kid on the side that Luke Cage didn't understand the connection when he was a kid you know Luke, Luke Cage's like an onion they just keep peeling back in layers 
The guy's had quite a life. He's leveled up, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been through a lot. It's like the Conan situation, right? It's like he's done... Like, one of the things I like about the Conan character is the fact that he's not just the big burly guy. He's had all these other experiences, and he's... He's a renaissance man in a way. <laughs> in a renaissance barbarian. He's a renaissance barbarian. Because he's a thief. He's, yeah, you know, he's, he knows yeah. stuff. He's experienced all those things. And it's like Luke Cage is kind of the same way. It's like he's first kind of presented as just like this like kind of lovable big guy that's immune to things. And he starts saying that, no, he's had all these experiences. And he's he has a lot of skills and a lot of knowledges that you maybe didn't think at first. Mm-hmm. Which I kind of like. Yeah, they're, they're building this character through... Like almost like outside observation in a way. Like yeah. it's it's through all of his outside experiences of who he's met, and it's not just flashbacks of here I was when I was a cop, here I was right. when I was doing yeah. this. It's all kind of told to you by other people who come into his story. Yeah, people from part different parts of his life, different chapters are are re emerging kind of thing. Yeah, that's very cool. Also think it's cool that, you know, they've ended up at the end of this episode with the the scientist doctor guy from Seagate. You know, and they're dipping him in baths of acid to, I guess, soften his skin. And like you said at the beginning, and he flatlines. And, and I wonder where this is going to go, because you got to figure... Did it look like at one point, before they moved him from the doctor's house to the barn, he like looked out the window and saw a light? Did you notice that? I didn't notice that. I kind of noticed that, and... Does that mean like he's being watched by people? Because maybe he is, because he was part of a ridiculous black ops science experiment at one time, you know? Or well, maybe, but it seems like they'd, they'd be more involved up until now. It's where they like all of a sudden that stuff would come into play now, not before when he was fighting a bunch of people on the street. I don't know. Oh no, I meant like the doctor being watched. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, isn't he supposed to? Have kind of run away and yeah. he's still, still been trying to learn stuff. I just like the fact that they're like, oh, okay, well, this is how a skin works. Well, I'll make this stuff to fix it. And then it doesn't look like maybe that's going to work. Yeah. Like, it's going to be funny if they... I'm still holding hope that his body just naturally fights it. resolves the, the shrapnel in some way by pushing it all, you know, yeah, like into his digestive system or coughing it up or something like that. But, like, the wounds are septic now, so... I mean, and how do you treat that with a guy who's immune to everything? Kind yeah, of, just you know, give him penicillin pills and hope yeah. for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Antibiotics forever. Or maybe, you know, maybe it's going to be that when his when he flatlines, maybe all that stuff relaxes or something. Like, maybe they're going to have some solution that, that could like, be, the only yeah. way to heal Luke Cage is to kill, kill him, <laughs> and then you can work on him, and then you have to resuscitate him. Yeah, that could be it, too. Um, or maybe Iron Fist is going to show up and cheap punch it out of him. Oh, yeah, just <laughs> that, that, that's going to be a connection. He'll just walk in next episode. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. It could be. So, are you saying, well, I think this is what, how you've kind of expressed it, this episode was better paced for you? Yeah. Uh, partly better paced, but I think also what was happening in these scenes that, you know, these kind of exposition scenes that, Again, they're not clipping around along like a Hollywood blockbuster. It was just more interesting to me. Mm-hmm. I feel like they were moving things along and getting a little more dramatic and just all around grabbing my attention a little better. Like, I have questions now. Before, if I had questions, it was I kind of felt like, man, they got like a bunch of threads they're going to have to tie up. And now my questions are more like exciting questions. Like, I, I'm interested to see what goes what happens next you know misty knight now has been told to logic luke cage into getting arrested or something (laughs) that'll be interesting if she even does that i think she's gonna just pretend like she's doing that and try to find out the guy who who put a gun to her who was really diamond back and she just probably doesn't know that yet you know what's gonna happen with luke cage obviously that's the big drama point but also like the shades of Black Mariah Diamondback Triangle what's gonna go on with that is interesting to me like Black Mariah I think her survival she plays the meta I think like Shades had her go into this meeting to be the confident kind of leader person to these crime bosses Diamondback kills almost all of them she metas that into Hey, you know, you could sell your guns to the authorities <laughs> yeah. to fight superheroes because they're dangerous. 
you know, so she bought herself out of it. She's good at spinning things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's good at spinning, which, you know, I, I wanted to mention that. That's that's pretty crazy to think about, too. It's like, well, I'm a newly armed sales seller, and I have this crazy alien bullet. I'm just going to tell the authorities I'll sell it to them to shoot superheroes. Like, I... <laughs> That might sound cool to a crazy guy, but I don't see how that really works. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that's what she's counting on. It's like, you're crazy. Here's this crazy idea. And he's going, I love it. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Because that's one of the things is that I felt like Cottonmouth was like, I mean, he obviously got angry and killed some people and did some stuff. But yeah, he was overall not a crazy, but like he didn't want to watch the world burn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to get power, wealth, and... Yeah, and I think in some twisted way he also thought he was taking care of Harlan too. Right, right, yeah, yeah. In his in his way. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah, um Dimeback is the He don't care. Yeah, he he's the villain that wants to watch the world burn. Right? Yeah, he's 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 that. So I'm wondering if maybe I mean we haven't seen the whole season yet, right? So there's still what, uh four episodes left? Yeah. But I'm thinking maybe they should have Taking those first six episodes and maybe condensed them down to four or something. You think maybe that's what it's like? Maybe they just spent too much time leading up to what feels like. Because originally, I mean, we were talking a few episodes ago, where's the story going from here? And now it feels like the story's almost starting. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if they spent too much time on, like, kind of like the setup for the actual. Yeah. Story part of the, like like the show. Four episodes left. They're now entering the, the epic part of the story with very little time left it seems like Mm -hmm. it's a lot like I think the same beef a lot of Preacher fans had with the first season of Preacher because it was just one giant prequel like it was all geared to kick off what really happened in the comic books Mm -hmm. a lot of Preacher readers were like not into it so this is kind of feels a little bit like that's what the first half of it yeah. yeah so so in like if you're using like the three act structure right it feels like the first act took too long mm-hmm. in the in in the series but i don't know maybe some of that stuff is gonna wrap back around but i feel like because there's like the corrupt cop angle and all this stuff i feel like that stuff's past now right because it was cottonmouth who was involved with all this stuff he's dead mm-hmm. Black Mariah doesn't know, like, it's not like he has a book, I'm assuming, that she just picks up, like, oh, I have, like, the whole, like, yeah. I have all this contact. She was trying to stay removed, so I'm wondering if all that stuff is going to kind of fall to the side now, and we're going to get more of Misty Knight and Luke Cage out trying to solve problems and losing some of the, it felt like a little bit of political stuff they were yeah, trying to yeah, run, yeah. and then it felt like they just kind of rolled over it. Yeah, and I think if there's any corrupt cop stuff from now on, it'll almost be like a throwaway. Like, of course we have corrupt cops. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like more like a, I think it was a Jessica Jones that had a lot of corrupt cops. Or anything. It had some some yeah. bad, a bad <laughs> cop, anyways, for sure. Yeah. All right, um, I, that's our review for episode nine. Stay tuned. We'll have ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That high, huh? I believe that's how many episodes there are this season. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm.